Hello, Bournemouth fans. Hope you're doing well. You may have seen on our social channels that we've got a very special guest coming along on Sunday night at 8 p.m. And it's none other than Jason Tyndall. We honestly cannot wait for this. And uh, the person that we've got chatting to him is TJ with JT. Tom Jordan, how are you, mate? Yeah, really good, mate. Yeah, it was uh, really enjoyable. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to watching it back. So this came through uh, Cherry's Trust, who got in touch with us, and they, you know, they wanted someone from uh, the podcast to chat to JT. And as a fan channel that's formed a good relationship with uh, Cherry's Trust and uh, Mark Dean, especially when he wants to get certain messages put out there, he always lets us know. And you know, sometimes we'll put them out, sometimes we'll put out a tweet or whatever. But we're all for helping. This came as a really good opportunity. I mean, chatting to JT, the AFC Bournemouth manager, and I thought there's no better person to chat to JT than TJ himself. And yeah, well, I can't wait to see it. What was it like, mate? Yeah, it was it was quite surreal, like you say. Um, there's not many, you know, fa fan channels are everywhere now, you know, for different clubs, but I don't know many, if any, that get to speak to the current manager. Do you know what I mean? It's um mm. We've, we've had the opportunity to obviously speak to ex-players and ex-staff and things like that. But to get the current manager, I think, you know, credit to JT, credit to Cherry's Trust, like you say. But, um, yeah, Jason was, was was so nice to chat to. He made it, you know, at the end of the day, you're, um, I've done a lot of these things with you now. But when you, you're talking to the current manager, it is a little bit, you know, nervy in the sense that, you know, you don't want to say anything wrong. You know, you want to keep that relationship up and you want them to think that, you know, you're, you're a good fan and you're doing the right things for the football club. But he made it so easy, uh, so easy to chat to. And you could see straight away that he kind of felt like he was almost enjoying it and wanted to get, I think with, with obviously the situation at the moment with fans not being allowed in. Um, and even though he's been at the club for a long time, as soon as he's got manager, he hadn't had any supporters in. And I think he, he was quite open about the fact that he wants to have that relationship with fans and, and keep that going. Because that's something that Bournemouth have always had that community family feel to him. So, um, yeah, it was really enjoyable. He's top bloke. Brilliant. So in the chat with you was Mark Dean, who's the chairperson of Cherry's Trust and also the treasurer, uh, Peter Ive. And yeah, it was really nice of them to invite us along as well. So I've always wondered, mate, I mean, obviously we'll be seeing this on the video on Sunday night when it's put out on our YouTube channel. So do subscribe if you haven't already. It's also going to be on Facebook and Twitter as well. <sighs> He strikes me as a person that's not amazingly confident with the media. Um, and also, you know, hark back a year ago and we would have had very media trained answers from Eddie Howe. Was it like that with JT at all or did he, you know, did he relax into it at all? Yeah, I think probably prior to his appointment, I think it was uh, quite a lot of us were saying, you know, will he be as good with the media? I mean, let's put it, let's put it right. Eddie was brilliant in in interviews and things like that. Whether whether you saw him on Match of the Day or any of them kind of platforms, he always represented the club really well. You never thought, oh, why is he saying that? He was always very good. Um, and JT probably thought, I haven't seen him do too many. Would he feel comfortable? Prior to this, I actually thought um, so far this season in interviews, uh, press conferences, he's actually been pretty good, uh, better than I expected. But what I will say is, you know, as much as I always love Eddie and I thought Eddie was great. Um, he was very clever, Eddie, I thought, um, quite political in some of his answering the questions to make sure he didn't give too much away, yeah. um, obviously to the benefit of the club. And you could see why he was doing it. What I'll say about JT is so open, um, never felt like he he wanted to dodge a question, um, felt he just answered it all. He was, like I say, very, very open. And, and whether that is because he's been chucked into it and kind of, you know, hasn't had that, like you say, that media train, he's just kind of. But there was no real filter. I felt he was, he almost, it felt like he wanted to give the fans the answers, you know, that we wanted to hear and wanted to be oh, open and honest with us. Because I think for him, like I like I mentioned, not having the fans in, in the ground and, you know, I think he wanted to say, you know, look, I'm here, I'm, I'm open, I want to talk to the fans, I want to get that relationship going. And it was, like I say, it was so easy because you didn't feel like you had to word things or be too careful. You felt like, I almost felt like if I asked something, that he potentially didn't want to answer. He would have just said that, um, which I quite liked about him. So, um, yeah, it was uh, definitely, you know, I, I think a lot of JT as it is, but it definitely made me warm to him even more and, and think, you know, I genuinely felt that he would want to do things like this going forward, which was, which was great. Uh, now, I'm going to ask your permission before I show it. There, so there's a photo of you and JT when you were... Just a nipper, mate. Well, am I allowed to show it? Yeah, of course. Okay. I look good, it's mate. On, it's fine. <laughs> it's on screen now. So how old were you here, mate? 
Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, I think it was late 90s. I, I think so. I was probably about nine, I reckon, maybe off the top of my head. Okay. It was some sort of one of them Junior Cherries things they did back in the day. Um, and I remember going along. I think my grandparents took me. Um, it was kind of the fans to meet some players and. I remember there wasn't many players turned up and everyone was a little bit disappointed. But looking at it now, the two, the two, two of the three that were there were Eddie Howe and Jason Tindall. Um, <laughs> the other player was David Town, which some people might remember, was a bit of yeah, a super sub kind of striker. Yeah. But they were the three I got pictures with. So I remember at the time being like, oh, I wish there could have been more there. But now I've had two of the best, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so unfortunately, because of uh, current social distancing meant I couldn't, and probably other reasons why I couldn't sit on Jason Tindall's lap, considering I'm 29. But uh, <laughs> it was a, I, I think I, I think he's he's probably we've both had a decent little glow up since then. But um, you know, feel free to to let me know what you think I look like as a nine year old. I, I thought I looked very cute. Yeah, very very <laughs> cute indeed. And you know what? It just uh, I'm really pleased that the Cherries Trust managed to get this. I think they've been trying to get it for a long time and they invited us in to screen it, which we're doing. It's also going to be on their Facebook channel as well. But it's not only testament to them, but it's also testament to um, Anthony Marshall and the media team as well for making this opportunity actually possible. And like you say, there's not many clubs out there that would offer up their manager for, for fear of them maybe saying something wrong or you know perhaps going against the philosophy of the club, you know. And he's a person that's not got that much media experience compared to Eddie. So there was always that risk of him saying the wrong thing. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think it's it's probably, there's pros and cons in terms of like, if you talk about ourselves and, and with the Back of the Net podcast, we're a small football club at the end of the day. So, you know, other football clubs are going to have so much, so much more people watching and more opportunities because of that. But on the flip side, we have got that, like I mentioned, that family community feel. And like you said, the, the Cherries Trust, Anthony Marshall, they really try and, and, and keep that going. And that's you know, a testament to everyone and the club and, and Jason as well. And yeah, I mean, there will be people that say it's probably easier to do this sort of thing when you've lost one football match, you're fourth in the league. Do you know what I mean? If we were in a relegation scrap, it would probably be harder questions being asked. But having said that, we've lost a manager that, you know, let's be honest, is an absolute legend and no one wanted to see him go. So for Jason, he will know that fans didn't, no fan wanted Eddie Howe to leave. So, you know, it's a big step for him. And, you know, there will be people that were saying, oh, was it an easy option just promoting JT? But fair play to him. And I think big credit to Jason. You've seen it on the pitch and in interviews and things like this. He's really tried to get his own stamp on things. I was always, I was always, I say worried. I was always a little bit, I, I was worried that he would potentially be a, try and be a cardboard copy to Eddie because Eddie was successful. And it'll be easy to kind of just do what Eddie's done and think, oh, Eddie used to do this. But I really like that he's kind of gone, this, these are my ideas, this is what I want to do. And you'll see when you, when you watch it, there are a few things in there that are really interesting. You can see that, that he's really wanted, he's got this vision that he wants to do. And yeah, you know, nothing but respect for him and really enjoy chatting to him. And like I say, Cherry's Trust and Anthony Marshall, just, just brilliant. And I feel that these are things that we can do going forward as well. Yeah, that's right. And um, on the night when we actually screen it, we'll give details of how people can sign up to Cherry's Trust. And there are also previous uh, videos that we've done with them as well. So can you sort of give me a taster on what kind of, obviously we won't give the answers away, but can you maybe let us know the kind of questions that you, Mark and Peter, were putting to him? Yeah, well, we tried to make it um, quite varied. So in terms of, yeah, the little things about kind of the current things we're seeing on the pitch in terms of systems, obviously JT's, Apart from the Birmingham game, it's kind of been a new system. So we kind of delved into that and his reasons behind that system and whether he's, you know, feeling like he can adapt in certain games or if he's going to stick to that. Um, spoke about in terms of obviously losing some key players, not bringing in any permanent signings. Was that a frustration for him? Um, and then we've then we spoke about other things, you know, in terms of him personally, his playing days, you know, what took him into that the coaching environment. Um, from the off, little things on, on Eddie and working under Eddie, but we try to keep it very much on Jason and, and what we're doing going forward and different things, you know, players and their roles now. And also spoke about, because it was quite fitting, that we're obviously on an international break. So how that could be so frustrating with the busy schedule, especially yeah, in the yeah. championship and, and talked about that. And with having players that he was quite open in the sense that we have got some players that have got history of injuries. And I think it also helps with, Jason had a lot of problems with injuries in his playing career. So yeah. he kind of alluded to that and 
and different things where they've got to keep an eye on and obviously all the staff are involved in that. Spoke about Graham Jones obviously coming in because he was someone we've obviously, we all know we've got a lot of staff that have affiliations with Bournemouth for years. So whether Graham Jones was someone specific or whether it was he really wanted eyes from the outside to come in. Um, and that was really interesting because that was something that he was quite clear on with his response, which was good. But yeah, we tried to delve into little things, didn't go into into kind of them boring kind of financial stuff like that. You know, at the end of the day, he's the manager and we wanted to know his his kind of future for the football club and what why he wanted to take it and what he sees going forward. And what I did like as well, I think we're all quite open to the fact that we started the season well on paper and there's no doubt about that. We're fourth in the league. But I also like the fact that he was very open about there's been some stuff that he hasn't been happy with and that he sees that he sees us improving as we go and oh, there's yeah that kind of unbeaten start he did he did kind of mention the fact that that was maybe and in a weird way a bit of a burden because you know some of the draws you thought were good because we were unbeaten but he wasn't actually happy with the performances and things like that so like I say really open really honest didn't try to skip any questions was was really bang on with his with his answers so uh, yeah definitely an interesting watch. Yeah. So, you know, you got to put your questions to him. But of course, in the situation we're in with coronavirus and playing behind closed doors, obviously, he can't really gauge how we feel. So did you manage to express your opinions on how the season's going so far? I mean, was that something that he asked you? Yeah, well, um, Mark actually put it to him near the end of, of the discussion and kind of said about, you know, what would you like to ask the fans? Ooh, obviously, okay. like, yeah, like you say, we, we can't... Re it's When you've got fans in the stadium, you can gauge it so much easier. Yeah. Um, so we kind of said, you know, because of that, is there anything you want to ask us? And, you know, we'll try and bring it back. And he, yeah, he did ask, you know, he wanted to know how things how things were going from our perspective, what we thought, how he was doing, how the team were doing, and, and you know, gauge the fans' kind of feelings and thoughts at the moment. So we all kind of gave our own little little views on that. I done a little plug to my player ratings video <laughs> and, and told him what grade he got. But um, no, that was really good. And, and like I say, like I've alluded to so far, what was really nice is I really did genuinely feel that he wanted to know. It wasn't like a thing he thought, oh, I better ask him. It was like yeah. he genuinely wanted to feel, what do the fans think? Because, you yeah. know, I, I'm, I'm really interested to see what you guys think, how we're going forward, because I haven't been able to gauge that in the stadium. And I really want to know, you know, what the fans think. And that, that was really, really nice. And he said, you know, he said at the end that it was something that he wanted to do going forward and, you know, get that relationship with the fans. So, and I think that does always help. The fact that he was a, he was a player for us. We've always loved him as an assistant. And I think he just, it was really nice to, to feel like we've all done different things where you're talking to someone, you think they're kind of answering, you know, they're, they're doing it for themselves, maybe to promote something, et cetera, et cetera. It felt like he was just like, really interested to what we what we were saying um cool. I like that. yeah so I, I really enjoyed that really enjoyed that and yeah so he did ask us and and we gave our little opinions on it as well it's it's interesting because with Eddie Howe sometimes I feel as though he was maybe a little bit parochial a little bit insular and he was questioned in a in a number of interviews about whether he takes note of press and any media speculation and social media and he says oh no I don't I don't I don't really sort of listen to any of it and you know not all social media is incorrect and fake and wrong and it's quite nice to hear that he wants to hear fans opinions of how things are at the moment and what you think whereas would Eddie Howe be so open as to listen to what supporters got to say I don't know obviously he had the benefit of being in the stadium with 11,000 people and hearing what they think whereas JT can't do that so maybe in these circumstances Eddie would have been a bit more open but it sounds like JT is um has um has pulled off a media masterclass on this interview, mate. Because uh, I've never heard you so buzzing. No, honestly, mate. I'm like you say. Everyone knows I'm a positive fan. I, I you know back in back in JT all the way. But um, yeah, it really did make me feel like I, I'm really behind this guy. I'm really excited about what we could do with him. I think it's fair to say that, like you mentioned, then with no fans in the ground, it's almost it's probably more of a reason to do this sort of thing. Um, yeah. You know, because we haven't got them supporters in the ground, and and I suppose. With Eddie, there's there's no doubt that the differences in that Eddie was very media trained and, and political in his answers, which I quite liked at the time. You know, there's mm. there's pros and cons to both of it. Um, but also, Eddie was in the Premier League, which is always a little bit a little bit different as well, potentially. Who knows? But I think what we do know is that you know JT gave us this opportunity, and he was brilliant, and it made me, like I say, warm to him even more. 
and uh, yeah, excited about the future because I just there was yeah, you'll see there's certain little things where we've kind of said um, when we're asking the question, you know, kind of said we don't expect you to to say about a player or say this or say that. We understand. Yeah. And then he's kind of gone into it and said it anyway, if you know what I mean. He's kind of like, no, no, I'm fine. You know, you're, you're, it was almost felt like you're, I would give these answers to media people. Well, yeah. you're, you're fans in your own right and, and you deserve to hear this as well. And I really like that about him. It, it felt like he was quite happy to, to say little things that he felt, you know, we're, we're supporters and we deserve to hear it. So it was, it was great, like I say, and, uh, really enjoy it and going to enjoy watching it back. And, uh, yeah, it was great. And one of the things you asked him was, you know, three at the back, four at the back. That's, you know, that's another thing that he's going to provide answers on as well. Is that right? Yeah, definitely. That was um, Ooh, okay. one of the first things, if not the first thing I asked, I think. Because, you know, at the end of the day, that's been one of the key things, isn't it? That he's, yeah. that he's kind of tweaked with that system a little bit. And, yeah, just kind of asked him, you know, in general, if that was something that I think I kind of said, you'll see that I, was that something, has he always loved that system? Or did he look at the kind of players he had available and thought, Oh, maybe this is a better way to go. Was it off pre-season? You know, different things. And kind of, he was really good with his answer. He he wasn't just, um, you know, that kind of general. Well, you know, I'll play what formation. You know, what you know, whatever. We'll see. He was very like, no, this is why I wanted to do it. These were the reasons. But I also like this system. Might do this going forward. This is why I changed it the last game. And it was he was really in depth about that, which was which was great. And I think. You know, people, that will be something that I think the fans, as you say, it's something that's been talked about a lot. And I think having seen his answer to that, people will be very, that will relax people and think, ah, yeah. I can see why. Um, I certainly felt that way anyway. So, yeah, hopefully this is something that um, we'll be able to sort regularly or, you know, whether it's through ourselves or through Cherry's Trust. And hey, maybe next time you'll be able to sit on his lap, like 20, <laughs> 20 years later or whatever it is. Yeah, I'm not sure if I recommend that for JT going into manager and, and that getting leaked to the press. But um, <laughs> yeah. certainly, yeah, certainly hoping we'll have a celebration promotion beer with him or something after the season. Who knows? Who knows? So Sunday night, eight o'clock on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. We absolutely cannot wait for this. Once again, a big up to the Cherries Trust. Um, all the information about them on our channel. Just search Cherries Trust on YouTube and you'll find info about them. And I'll pop some links in the description below. And straight afterwards, Tom, we're going to be reacting at 9pm, aren't we? So it's about an hour long. It's an extensive chat. And then we're going to be live and seeing what the fans at home think. And, you know, from your opinion, you think it's, it's going to be a positive reception from most AFC Bournemouth supporters. Is that right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's always going to be things, as you know, with a fan base, whether they prefer certain players or prefer certain tactics, that's always going to be up for debate. But I think in general, people come out of it and think, you know, fair play to JT. He, like I say, didn't dodge a question, asked them really, answered them really well. Um, and I think, yeah, I think everyone will be really pleased with what they see. Definitely worth watching for sure, even if it's not for... Just, just even if it's not oh, for just seeing me represent back of the net, do you know what I mean? Come on, of course. But nah, honestly, yeah, really, really worth watching. And like I say, uh, big thanks to Cherry's Trust as well, who are also brilliant. And uh, yeah, definitely worth checking them out because they're a voice at the end of the day, like like we are. They're another voice, and we build that voice, especially during lockdown and things like that. It's it's all positives, do you know what I mean? So, gotta be done, gotta be done. This guy is a natural. I'm telling you right now. Tom, mate, thank you very much. Really appreciate you coming on and looking forward to seeing that. And that's Cheers, on Sunday night, 8 p.m. on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Looking forward to the reaction show afterwards. Anyway, enjoy your weekend and we'll see you in the next one. Up the cherries. Yeah.